Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 41. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Links in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, as of early December of 2023, the total market cap is currently coming in at around 1.483 trillion, where the fair value logarithmic regression trend line fit to all prior data at approximately 2.263 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 34.47%. Now, if you have not been following this series, the purpose of it is to take a step back away from the shorter time frames and to look at the bigger picture of the cryptocurrency asset class. And the bigger picture is that we go through periods of undervaluation and we go through periods of overvaluation, right? That's generally what we see. And this time has not been different. My expectation for this year has been that we would spend the entire year below the red fair value logarithmic regression trend line, but above the lower green regression trend line. And so far, we have continued to do that. We have not deviated outside of that bound, okay? So our expectations there continue to be met. It's not to say that it can't deviate outside of it. There is still... You know, we, we still have the last month of the year to go, but at this point, we're so comfortably within the range, the lower band all the way down at 762 billion or so, the upper band, or, or sorry, the fair value at around 2.266 trillion. So we're still comfortably within that band. And one of the things that we've said this year, and, and it often happens when we're in this undervaluation territory, is that we, we get this rotation of capital typically from altcoins to Bitcoin, where Bitcoin dominance goes up and the market sort of heals itself, okay? And again, this time has not been any different, right? The market, we've seen capital slowly go from alts to Bitcoin. That's not to say not all, you know, that's not to say that some altcoins are not up. I know that some of them are, but we, we can see that the Bitcoin dominance has gone you know, from 39% or so to around 53% where it is today. So that trend continues to play out. And my guess will continue to play out throughout the end of the year. Now, remember, periods of undervaluation and overvaluation can last years before they reverse course into the other regime. Back in 2015, you can see that we fell below the fair value in January of 2015, but did not go back into overvaluation territory until May of 2017. So it took approximately two and a half years. This time, we fell below the fair value in June of 2022. We're almost at the end of 2023. So it's been about one and a half years. If we were to follow what happened over here, then it could lead you to believe that it might take another year before we even go into the overvaluation territory. If you look at last cycle, it was a little bit different in the sense that we did go above the fair value for a little bit. You can see we did in 2019. Um, but if you ignore that, which I'm not saying is, is a smart idea, but if you were to say, all right, well, how long did it take for us to durably get back above it for more than just a few months? You can see that we fell below it in December of 2018, and we not really durably get back above it until December of 2020. So in that case, it took about two years, right? So you have two years, two and a half years. And then over here, if you exclude sort of this initial peak above it, just like we had in 2019, you can see that we fell below it, you know, late 2011 like October of 2011, maybe November to, to really go below it. And then we broke back above it in February of 2013. So in that case, it took just over a year. 
So you have about a year, two and a half years, two years. So far, we're at a year and a half. All right. And we've had a pretty great move recently, but we're still well below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. So just keep in mind, you know, the expectation for this year was never for us to go back into overvaluation territory. That's not a common thing that happens in pre-having years, although there are some exceptions to the rule where it will it'll happen for a brief period of time, like 2019. Um, but it's not something that, that you know, we, we've seen necessarily every cycle. And we didn't see it in 2015. We haven't seen it in 2023 in terms of going back above the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. One of the things that is interesting to carry out is this exercise of total crypto market cap divided by the fair value. And if you do that, you get a chart that looks like this. Okay. And you can see that despite the fact that total market cap has trended higher, we're actually not as high up in terms of our valuation with respect to the fair value regression trend line. And the reason, again, for that is, remember, the fair value assumes that there's just ongoing adoption, right, within the asset class. And so the fair value is a monotonically increasing function. You know, the, the idea is that the asset class just generally trends higher. So if it's not keeping pace with that, even if it's going up, then we get further away from the fair value. So we were actually closer to the fair value in April of 2023 than we are right now. Okay, that's a fact based on this chart. That's fact is a loose term. I mean, like it, it, it's a fact based on this chart, but whether we whether we assign that fair value as you know at, at, at that valuation back then, that's not necessarily a fact. That's just sort of a a model speculation from a model. But in terms of this model, we are uh, we're not as close to that red trend line as we were back in April. So what's interesting is. What you'll see here is, is really it's been slowly going down, right? Like, I mean, every time we've had a peak on sort of the extension from the fair value, it's it's been going down. Okay, so this will be something to keep an eye out on. Now, one of the things we've mentioned before, and, and I'll, I'll just go through it again, just in case that it happens. Um, we've talked about this a number of times, but it's the idea, uh, generally speaking, that, you know, sometimes you'll sort of go sideways until you get close to the lower regression trend line, right? And you can see that it happened over here in 2015. Um, and then we just sort of rode that up for a long time. Last cycle, very similar thing where we essentially we came all the way back down to to the lower band. I know it doesn't look like it because the total market cap all on the screen, you can see it went down to a 140 billion or so The the lower band was actually at 107 billion. But do remember that on a wick, right, on a wick, we did go down there, right, on, on the, I, you know, the, the wick that we had right here, there's about 100 billion, 108 billion or so, which is essentially where that lower green regression trend line is. So the point is to say, you know, you always look at this trend line and say, well, you know, if we were to go sideways, how long would it take us to hit the green regression trend line? So from these valuations, it would take you until February of 2025, maybe March of 2025, to sort of get to the lower green regression trend line if we were to just go sideways at this valuation. The current lower regression trend line, again, is at about 758 billion or so at the time of this. And then the fair value, again, is a little over 2 trillion. So I know it's a pretty big range, but I mean, you guys see you know, just how quickly crypto can move. Um, and so it's important to sort of keep those 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 numbers in mind just in case there is a continued move to the upside or if there is a surprise move to the downside, which I know it's not certainly not a popular thing to talk about. And I'm not going to you know spend a ton of time talking about it just because there has been a lot of momentum. And I know people are excited and, and it, you know, people love to ride that momentum. But it's always a good reminder, to, you know, just to sort of remind ourselves in general that. Sometimes those things can happen, those events can happen, and, and you know, you should be prepared for it if it does happen um, regardless, okay? So we'll continue to update this chart as, as the months go on. So far, really not a whole lot has changed, right? I mean, we have slowly trended up, but despite trending up, we're still kind of just in between 
the fair value, and the lower green regression trend line. If you look at how far down we went undervalued the last couple of cycles, you can, and we just sort of draw a line across the page, you can see that you know, last cycle, we, we came all the way down here to around, you know, I guess around 55% below the fair value. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit more on the WIC. I mean, on, on the WIC, it was, it was more so like 60 to 65% undervaluation. Same thing over here, right, in, in 2015. 2012, we, we did not go as undervalued as we already have gone this cycle. And then a couple years before that, we, we were actually even more undervalued at around 68% undervaluation. So interesting trend here, sort of keep an eye on in terms of the extent of undervaluation. You can see where we are currently with respect to where we've gone the last couple of cycles. So again, the reason why we make these videos is so that you don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day or the short-term, but to remind yourself of what the long-term view is of the asset class, right? And I, I've said that many, many times, right? The, the general idea is that when it's undervalued, you scale into the asset class. When it's overvalued, you scale out. I have had a biased view because in in you know in pre-having years, it generally pays to be Bitcoin heavy over alt heavy. That view has gotten me into a lot of trouble this year because of course some altcoins outperform. But then again, as we said at the beginning of the year, there will always be some altcoins that outperform. But the general trend, right, the general trend is that Bitcoin will take more and more dominance as the year goes on. And so that Bitcoin heavy portfolios in pre-having years tend to outperform most altcoin heavy portfolios. Although in any given week or month, you can find, you know, 100 altcoins that have outperformed Bitcoin. The, the hard part is a lot of the ones that are outperforming it today are different than the ones that were popping off in April, and then those are different than the ones that were popping off in, you know, in Q3 of 2022, right? So it's really hit or miss as to which one of those are, are, are moving against Bitcoin. But the general trend has been that Bitcoin has been slowly taking back that dominance. And so scaling in to the market in pre-having years, again, Bitcoin heavy portfolios tend to do better on average than altcoin heavy portfolios as capital rotates from one sector to the other. But again, guys, I mean, you know, my expectation is that we'll still be between these two trend lines uh, for a while longer. Could go well into 2024. You know, last cycle, we didn't durably get above it until the end of the halving year. The cycle before that, we didn't durably get above it until the post ha about halfway through the post halving year. So again, you know, these things can can take time, but you also have to be ready for anything. You know, the market moves quickly in, in both directions. My general view, and I've said this before, is that I, I do eventually think that the asset class will hit 10 trillion. Okay, um, I know you know we, we talked yesterday about sort of the recession risk, and and we have the inverted yield curve, and we still have all of that to deal with. You know, we still have all of that to deal with at some point, and and it could put a wrench in the plans, um, temporarily, of course. But overall, over the long term. My view is that the asset class will go to 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. Again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.